All right, guys, welcome back to part three. Now we're gonna try to make the model, okay? So first we're gonna try to import some layer we might want to use. So we import sequential model, layers, we import uh, dense and dropout, flatten, reshape. We also import maybe the max drawing, yeah? Maybe pep swing, too. Let's show you. Right. So as I say, um, in order to not trying to replicate the actual darknet architecture, we're gonna use a way more simpler feature extract extractors. Is that we're gonna use a pre-train model, okay? So we're gonna use in here we're gonna use the ResNet 15, 50, TF Keras applications ResNet 50, ResNet 50. So include top. We don't want to include the top. So do false. Wait. We do image net. Input shape, we it is image shape, image size, and I3. There is something wrong with that. Oh, we forgot the comma. Okay, so the reason why I make it the top, actually, we do feature extractors, I think. Is that if any you guys, any of you want to uh, fine tune them, you guys can do false in here. We only need to train the, the last layer, okay? So now this is the official model, model equals sequential. Model dot add features extractors and we might want to reduce um, the image a little bit so that <laughs> it's less complicated to calculate. And oh, I forgot to add the batch normalization. So I add some batch normal. Um, yeah, I add batch normalization so that it might um, convert in faster and it might uh, reduce like the range of the output. It's not going to be like millions. Yeah, of value. So never mind. Okay, so we have a flatten. We flatten them after we got the features. Then we add the dense layer. One more dense, I think. Should be good. Um, the default should be. Yeah. So basically, I'm not trying to replicate the YOLO architectures, but I would try to show the YOLO loss. Okay. So this is just a really simple uh, network that makes us easier to understand. Because the core of this, I think, is the YOLO loss and the way they, they split the image into the grids and trying to predict the object inside the grids. So I'm not trying to replicate the document architecture spins that I do a different thing, okay? So for this one, we do activation, equal leaky value. We also add some um, dropouts. So that it might not overfit. All right, and the last batch normalization in here. Yep. Okay, now is our head, okay? Model add. Now we're gonna do dense, grid size times grid size times box size times five less than plus. So this is a total, total notes we need, and then we're gonna try to reshape them into grid. Okay, so it's seven by seven by, which is grid size by grid size by box size times five plus number plus. Yeah, so that's why. Yeah, okay, yeah, easy enough. Add the dense, and we reshape them. Like what we want. Okay, and Moto and YOLO. So this is something I make it different, but let me first try to summarize the model first. Oh no, leaky relative, that's weird. Leaky red oh my bad. TF Keras application speeds you have no. Oh my god, sorry guys. Alright, should work right now. And what I mean by YOLO act activation is that so in here, it's all using linear activation function. So it's gonna range from minus infinity infinity to infinity value, which is take for me I think it takes longer to converge and it's not that good. So what we want to do in here is that we're gonna have a custom layer that convert um X, Y, W, and H into uh, a range of 0 and 1. Or maybe we don't need that. The only thing uh, is that we're going to convert the last two class probability into um, a softmax function. Okay, like a softmax output. So it's better. So, like, it's better in predicting um, the classes that its grid, grid is belong to. Okay, but that's better. And yeah, so let's try and make that. And one more optional thing we can try to do is like we can also converting the x, y, w, and h uh, into a sigmoid function so that. So that it might have a better output. Oh, sorry. 
call self input. So the classes is TF. We're gonna apply the self max to the input. Okay. X is gonna be minus one, the last axis. Then other uh the remaining uh how can I say this? Maybe I'm gonna say coordinate, I think. Equal to the input two five. Okay. And then return TF concat order and coordinates x is equal minus one and yeah i mean we can do um this to make it a little bit um better in the output because the x y w and x is all in zero and one range so we can do this okay yeah all right uh sorry <laughs> so coordinate it and classes cool summarize it one more time and that is our architectures Yep, so we don't want to train the ResNet because already trained it. We're gonna need to train the remaining parameters, okay? Now let's go to the YOLO loss. YOLO loss. Okay, let's make a YOLO loss. We're gonna have Y true and Y bread predictions. We're gonna have three different loss the coordination loss, and the confidence loss, and the class loss. We're also gonna make a different function for each of them. Oh, let's try to make that. Oh, actually, return 95 times code loss. This is just an optional weight that we can, feel, you guys can feel free to change them if you guys want. But right now, I'm prioritized the coordination loss, and that's why I give it that much loss, uh, weight. So we can also, um, actually, let's make this by 15. We also want a 50. Okay. Okay. Let's do the coordination loss. All right. So first, we're gonna need to find if it assists an object in the grid. So assist object equal tf expand dims y true. So this at four, right? Four, 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 four. Yeah, so zero, one, zero, one, two, three, and four. Yeah, okay. Great. And the xy prediction is gonna be equal to assist object times the y bread. Zero to two, same thing, but this time is xy true. All right, and y true. You just do, yep. And w and weight, uh, width and height prediction. We're gonna do the same thing. It's just this time we do wh, and we do from two to four. Very true equals this object times y true. Two to four. Great. Now we're gonna do the ms, the mean squared error, uh, the squared error, right? We don't we, for this one. We can do the mean square errors or maybe the square errors. It's up to you, but I'll try to use the mean square error, okay? So we do the sum and square of the um, difference between the predictions and the ground truth, okay? And then we plus them. And x, y, bread. And All right. And then we return the coordination loss. So this is something optional, okay? We can divide them. By, by count the non-zero value. Yeah, so that we're gonna be the mean, okay? But it's fine if we don't. Okay, so this can be either square errors or the mean square errors. But yeah, I think I, I, I would pretty prefer this over the square errors alone because this gives me a better indicator of whether uh, it's actually decreasing or not. You know? All right, let's go to the class last. Oh, actually, let's do the confidence last first, okay? And the last equal uh, of what you might bet. So same thing now, we're gonna copy this, paste it in here. Confidence last equal to TF, we do some, we do the same thing to have that match where we minus assist objects times times Y true. Uh, Four to five, which is four. It just I, I use it so that we don't need to expand the last dimension anymore. Why bread? Four to five. Yep. All right. We bless them, and this is zero point five times this one. This is something from the paper. We can either increase this or decrease that. In the paper, oh, I think I'm missing an S in here. This is for no object, so we're gonna do one minus that. All right, so this is for objects and no objects, okay? And then finally we return that. And same with this. You have to try to return that and copy it in here. 
Oh my god. Alright. And now here we go to the glass. glass. And then we have the assist. And then the glass loss is pretty simple. Glass loss equal to have reduce some GF mass square this object times the the difference between the y true and the y red prediction. Okay. And remember the order when we check the difference is not that important because we're doing the square. So either it's negative or positive, it's all square up. So yeah, no negative over here. So feel free to do so. Okay. Right. Let's keep going. Here we turn a glass loss, divide it by TF. Alright. Oh, but actually here uh, in the paper we need to take the square root of them. So yeah, we're gonna try to do TF uh, square root. TF square root. So as we can see, um so in case if we use sigmoid, it's all 0 and 1. And if we take the square root, it's totally fine. But if we're not using a sigmoid, uh, we can use linear or something. The value gonna going to be, if it's linear, it's going to range from minus infinity to infinity, right? So we might need to do like uh, something like tf.math.sign of that. So that we still have to penalize if it's taking the wrong directions. We times this. And then here we're going to do tfmath uh, abs absolute of this value. Okay, so that, yeah. Yep. That's it. And now let's create a, uh, let's compile the model. Optimizers, we're gonna do TF, TensorFlow, Keras, Optimizers, Atom, Learning Rate equals 0 0.03. And remember, we, if it use sigmoid, then the value always is zero and one, okay? It's all zero and one. Uh, it's, it's ranking from zero and one. So if we set the learning rate to high, it's gonna be like always zero or one, but it's not a, it's like always an integer, like zero and one not zero point something okay and if we're not using sigmoid but instead we do linear the value is infinity to infinity so if we set the learning rate too high it might actually range from minus infinity to infinity okay so remember the learning rate is really important in this um paper so in here i use 0 0.03 and if you guys see it like millions and stuff like that we actually try to do this decreasing that okay and now let's see the metrics i just want to um actually see that okay coordination loss confidence loss I want to actually see how it's uh, optimizing overall. All right, now let's actually fit it. Actually, first compiling them. All right, it's working well. And model fit x equal training data set validation data equal validation data set uh, epoch. Let's do for three hundred epochs workers. Uh, say. And I only want you to do validation every five epochs, okay? All right, that's it. Well, it's already fine. Oh, I think it's a different thing. Training data generator, okay, cool. All right, let's train it. Okay, now let's get it trained, okay? Oh, something wrong. Type All right, there is something wrong over here. So let me see. Oh, wait. The land. My bad. It's really my bad. Yep. Let me do as type int. Okay. That makes sense. Start working, guys. Oh my god, what now? Expand dims. Oh, I forgot to add expand dims at the end. Oh, hey. Sorry for background, it's Independence Day. People are doing fireworks. <laughs> All right, come back in it.
Okay, so after training, now we're gonna try to test it, okay? Right now we test 10 images, and this is our bottle, so we're gonna do them right over here, we resize them, and then normalize it, and just put it into our function with right above. Oh, and something we need to check is that this test print has been changed. So this time I make it um, CV over here, so that I can show multiple images, and in order to, yeah, show it, we can't just do anything. We can't just input any uh, key on our keyboard, and it's like, you're gonna move into the next image, okay? Now let's see that. All right, this is three hundred and something. This is not good. This is a cat that is good. This is a dog that is good, and this is a dog. And yeah, I, as I said, um, it's just the first version, which is not implemented the anchor boxes and stuff like that. So it might not be good at detecting pictures in different scales. Yep. So uh, what we can do is we giving it more data. We might try to do the data augmentation. Um. Yeah, this is not better. Yeah, we can try to do the data augmentation, or maybe change the model architectures. Oh, this is a dog, that's good, a dog, a dog, a dog, a dog, oh, this is a dog. <laughs> Alright, let's go do something. A dog? Um, that's not good. Uh, a dog, a cat, a dog, a cat, a dog. Okay, yeah, so we see some, yeah, it's, it's performing good at some point, and yeah, some scale is not that good. And you see the validation is not that good, and the loss is going well. So, one way we can try to do is, yeah, changing the architectures again. Um, yeah, testing different things, adding more data because we only use 1,500 for training in total. But yeah, I would say that's it for this video. Um, thank you a lot for watching and please leave a like, a comment, and please subscribe to my channel. It's my first video, so just giving me some feedback so I can maybe improve it next time, okay? Thank you a lot and I'll see you guys next time.